Holbrook New Media. This is Jeffrey K. Holbrook. Welcome to the audio feed from HolbrookNewMedia.com. Today, Jeff and Jeffrey, the weekly catch up. We hope you enjoy the audio version. If you want to see what we look like, I will embed the video for this episode at HolbrookNewMedia.com. Hello, everyone. I'm Jeff Blanchard, and next to me is my co host, Jeffrey K. Holbrook, and you're watching the weekly catch up. And we're back. Good morning, Mr. Holbrook. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Sorry, I'm uh, kind of <laughs> unprepared. I was in a bit of a rush because I had to work over at work. But hey, you know, here we are. And uh, like you say, everything's up and running. Sounds good. Well, I must admit, I do this, the same thing on a Wednesday night. Go visit my mother. And then I'm and now with the clocks back for winter time and you're set for summertime. As soon as I get back, I've only got about 10 minutes to get ready. And then mm -hmm. we're ready to go whereas in in uh, your summer or my summer in your winter there's usually about an hour to go well yeah eight, an hour till nine o'clock so i've got about an hour to to get ready but anyway but we're getting we're so professional we don't need much time to set up and that's uh and mm -hmm. obviously we don't need much time for makeup or anything do we <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> If it's not shiny on your head, so you must have put something on, you see. So. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was trying, trying, trying to wipe my face at least if I just come in from work real fast. Like you say, I'm just all, all, all in a big, big rush today. Uh, I mm. did have a surprise at work the other day, though. Oh, what's that? Well, I've got my fancy new phone. You notice it didn't giggle. I've learned to get it out of the room because what it does, it makes yeah. that it makes that noise because it's telling me that the stream has started. Stream and that's why it does it right when you start talking. It's like, hey, hey you know, so. <laughs> anyway, I left it downstairs today, so okay, just uh, but um I was, you know, playing with my phone at work and it's nice, you know, it does all those things. You can check um, you know, your Facebook and you can check uh, you know, I've even got a Pinterest account and you know, just check all these things. You can tweet, you can do all kinds of stuff just right there from the phone and it's so nice and but I got something unexpected on my phone. You know how everybody talks about Facebook being hacked? Oh yes, yes. Well, I'm sitting there, I'm scrolling down Facebook, and all of a sudden there's a porno video. Oh. On Facebook? <laughs> on Facebook, on my phone, while I'm at work. And I'm like, okay. Oh, yeah, if somebody I mean, it, would, you. you know, and, and they, they, they say that, and what it is, it was being streamed from a group. It's a private group. Uh that uh, it's a private group that that is a very uh, clean. I mean, they have very very strict rules, and they're they just now hit sixty thousand members. I mean, in this private group, and it's it's a like you say, I'm not gonna say the name of the group or the name of the person that actually got hacked, but uh, what happened was they hacked an individual who had been in the group, and now instead of just putting porno pictures like they used to do on people's accounts, now they can do a live stream. Oh, and so. It's like, what in the world? And so everybody, you know, everybody in the, in, in that were in the group, they were on at three in the morning. You know, it was about two, two in the morning. Everybody that was on at that point started saying, whoa, what is this? And, and you know, then it was, it, uh, everybody started reporting it. And it, it was probably on there for, I don't know, half an hour, 45 minutes before Facebook, you know, got notified enough by enough people and they went ahead and shut down the stream. Um, then the guy was notified. There was this one thread where everybody was talking about it and stuff. And uh, there were two people with that name on the group out of 60,000 people, you can imagine. And so I was, I was like, what in the world is going on here? And, and, and the guy didn't know anything about it because they had hacked him. He was asleep. <laughs> Whenever he woke up, he found out what was going on and, and, you know, uh, the first person that had mentioned something about it said, well, if this is the kind of stuff that's in this group, then I'm not going to be in this group uh, anymore. And, and, you know, and, and started kind of trashing him a little bit. And then we were explaining, look, this guy got hacked, you know, and it's nothing, but I mean, I mean, this is, this is stuff that's happening, um, from out of the country. So there's no jurisdiction in the United States. They can shut down a particular stream. Uh, the IRS constantly have people who are out of out of uh, the country, 
Uh, there was this one guy that had a podcast, and he actually got friends with some of these people that work at a call center in one of these countries that the United States or whatever has no. And they call constantly call and claim they're from the IRS and that you owe them money, and they try to get your credit card number. Oh. And as far as the people working at the call center, they just believe they're working just like anybody here would be working at a call center for mm -hmm. AT&T or something like that. And what happens is they have they just constantly give them a new number because uh, – the CIA or whoever can shut them down or the FCC, probably federal communication commission can just shut down that number. And so they've got a few hours and then they pick another number <laughs> and they've got a few hours and they pick another number and people actually give them their credit card numbers and, and pay them. And because sometimes you mentioned the IRS and if it's not a big amount, people are frightened. Oh, okay. Just to get them off my back. Well, sure. So they say it's all amount, and you'll say you owe us, Fifty-seven dollars and fifty cents, and right. if people say, "Okay, I'll get that out of the way because I can't be bothered." I'm not arguing with it for fifty-seven dollars, mm -hmm. but uh, I do that. I must admit, when they send me, like I just got one from our IRS saying about the claim of something on your health insurance, it could be a mistake. It might be okay. Let us know if you dispute it. Otherwise, we'll just charge you the difference. But I thought, <laughs> but really, is it worth? disputing it and looking it up so all it is but by the time you've gone on that then they'll say they'll find out some reason to say no it's wrong so and if it's not a big amount you think what's the point it's just not, not worth doing it but at least you know like your irs the same as ours they do not phone you up and ask you for money no, and I mean, and they, they don't ask you for the credit card. They just usually just threaten you usually. It's what they do. They send you one of those hideous envelopes with the little windows on them, don't they? And then it says, <laughs> and when you open it up, it says, greetings. <laughs> yeah, that means you're about to be, uh, you know, you can either get hacked or you can be audited. You got your choice. But I mean, but there's, but there's these, these people that make a living working at mm. these phone centers. And as far as they're concerned, it's a legitimate job. I mean, you know, yeah. they're they're calling up just like some of these people work at call centers that are a service for these various different firms. And so depending on mm. which station they're at, depending on who they say they're with. And so yeah, and they think they think they're correct because they're just being told, here's a debt. You've got phone up and try and collect it right. We're from this. Person. And then they, mm -hmm. they just said they're doing illegal uh, things, but they don't realize that they're just being hired as a call center to call people or, to do that. So they're the intermediate people. But, so, but, but yeah. it's in a country that has no treaties with the yeah. United States about this kind of thing. So it might be Sri Lanka or someplace, you know, who knows. And so what they do is just, uh, you know, and so it takes technically not illegal what they're doing. Mm. You know, so they just have a job and they're just doing it. It's a bit like in the 80s in England when uh, they used to have the pirate radio stations. Mm -hmm. And they were on ships that was just outside the five mile limit right. of the country, but the, you know, and it was always a big thing because they were quite popular, but they couldn't do a thing because they weren't in the English jurisdiction, so right. they, they weren't liable to any of the laws, and they was in sort of like no man's land, so they were able to to get away with it. But, I know a guy who had a pirate radio station in Iraq. In Iraq, oh god, yeah, that whatever. <laughs> I mean, they were, they were uh, I don't even know if I ought to say the guy's name, but uh, he actually, he actually had uh, over in Iraq, he would play, uh, you know, quotes from movies, different things from John Wayne and, you know, just American stuff, you know? And, and so it was, it was really, really cool. But, uh, he's, he's, uh, uh talked, uh, talked a fair amount about it. I've, I've talked to him and stuff and he'd, he'd love to have one here, but <laughs> it's not, not going to work out because boy, they, they track and they track and they track and you can't broadcast for any more than a few minutes before they find you and, uh, and find you and find you. Yes. And, but back then it was the sort of thing where it's the only thing, way to do it. But now there's probably no need because you can sell your wares, do whatever you want on a, on YouTube streaming. You can do it on yeah. Facebook streaming. If you've got so many avenues to do things and, and sell your wares, you don't have to waste your time being on, on the air all day to, to build up a following, do you? So, well, it'd be, yeah. it'd be, be kind of hard to do because you have to keep moving. And so mm -hmm. being, and you have these short range transmitters anyway. So, you know, being able to actually be there at a particular time when people are looking for you, you can't be on a schedule or, 
uh, the FCC will find you. You can't, uh, you know, and mm. you can't be in the same area. You have to bounce around. You have to go places. And, and you know, because they'll, as soon as the signal is detected, buddy, they are out looking for you with these trucks that can triangulate stuff around and try to find you. So, yeah, it's it's really, really a wild thing. But this this hacking is really getting really getting out of hand on Facebook. I mean, mm. like you said, that's the first time I've heard people talk about it. I'm like, yeah, okay, you know, somebody put a big, you know, picture on their site or something. You know, and I've uh, supposedly the way they get a hold of your account is you will get a friend uh, request. Mm. And it's always from somebody that you thought you were already friends with. Which, you oh, know, okay. occasionally people people will... Uh, you Mock know, you clean them out and then try to, oh, yeah, I didn't mean to defriend him. But that's what happens. And, I mean, I've checked before, and there have been people that I have a friend request from someone who was already my friend. Oh. And so if you answer those and you do that, uh, then that's how they get into your account. Um, mm. And, again, it's just some, some kind of a thing that way. I mean, but now they're streaming live videos over these hacks. I mean, and that is that is just, just terrible and awful. And I'm wondering when it's going to get to the point to where Facebook itself is – they're offering these services that are unsecured. Mm. They're saying they have rules about what can be broadcast, what can be done, what we can do on their system. <laughs> and they're making us certain promises. You know, you have this group that is, you know, you can set the rules for it. This is a totally clean group. Everything's like that. You know, you can't do this. You can't do that or whatever like that. And suddenly somebody's streaming porno over your clean group feed. And it's like, wait a minute. You guys told us this was going to be, you know, we could set the rules and be clean. So why are you allowing this to happen? Mm. And they're not stopping it anywhere. I mean, they're not stopping it. It's just happening anywhere anybody wants to do it. And you know yourself with the, with the way it is. It's, as I said, when you use Facebook, you expect it to be uh, 100% clean that you could have your grandmother uh, go on the site, look at different things, uh, look at anything and not be shocked or offended. And that's a, the whole whole sort of thing with Facebook. Imagine if you have to go think, oh, I'm going to look, but hang on, don't you look just in case there's something <laughs> unsavory on the screen and I have to come back and do that. That's sort of going to be... Uh, a bit, bit ridiculous if we have to get down to to that. But then again, I'm the I probably don't use Facebook that much, and the probably the hackers will look at people that've got, like you said, a group of sixty thousand. That's an ideal with a, it's a group of three people are not too interested. I don't think it's someone that if they waste their time, they're going to make sure it's a a, a big audience. I suppose. Well, it's uh, you have to make sure it not only is a big audience, but it's people who will be suitably shocked at what you're doing. That's right. You yes, know, it's just yes. it's just fun. I mean, you know, it's a, okay, a terrorist attack in general, you don't go and attack somebody's house, do something to three people out no. of the country. <laughs> you know, you go find a big place where you can make the biggest impact on as <laughs> many people as you can to get this message across. And, mm -hmm. you know, these, these hacks are the same way. They're actually trying to find people who would be shocked about what they're doing. And uh, yeah, there was no m monetary value. I'm guessing, although the the language on the thing where the link is, you know, was kind of broken English. You know, want to see more? Click here, and it was a Bitly type of a link. So you know, it wasn't something that you could, you know, track easily. It goes to the Bitly system, you know, to like shorten links and stuff like that. And you know, want to see more? You know, click here. That type thing, see, and it's see what, yeah, <laughs> like the the, the uh, Bart Simpson one. This is see more butt. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's, could be it. Uh, could be it. Yeah, but now, I mean, it was it was it was really really you know disgusting, and and then it was like it's like you know, Facebook's making you know yes we have to follow their rules, but they're making certain promises. Yeah, and, and they really you know, there, was, there was one lady that said, "I am so glad that this happened at two in the morning because my you know five year old grandson gets on my Facebook and looks around and stuff like that, and I would not have wanted him to see this." You know, and that's that's exactly what I was saying. It's the it's the sort of area you expect to be safe, no matter who's looking at it and looking at your feed. Mm -hmm. If they're on your phone or, or whatever, you don't. It's not don't want to be that one where you have to be closely guarded. Oh, I wonder what's going to come up this time. And plus, really, let's face what. I just can't see the uh, 
why they want to do it because i mean they're not making anything out of it are they, like they well i don't any... know i'm i don't know if you clicked and went to their site off at bitly yeah. feed that yeah. looks okay i can hear you but it looks like my picture is frozen here okay it's back it's not my end not, not my, my end is still okay it was showing okay okay mine's mine's kind of freezing ever so often but okay. but i'm i'm wondering at what point is facebook going to need to be able to, I mean, you know, people are going to start leaving. I mean, people who like to see clean content are expecting clean content. You know, porno was something I'm assuming people could go just find any time they wanted it, I guess. Now it's coming to find you. Now, yeah, now that's, that, that's, that's different. That is a completely, that is unacceptable, <laughs> you know, to, to people who are looking for, who are not wanting that. I mean, there's a lot of people who don't want that. There's a lot of people who have a clean environment. They want their kids to be able to do it, everything like that. And yes, you know, you might click the wrong link or you might do something, but this is something that's hunting you down. Down and and, and showing Facebook needs to provide a, well, I know the, the big buzzword is safe space. Mm. But, you know, they're telling us that this is not a porno site, so they need to stop this stuff from coming through. I know I'm, I'm preaching, but still, still, it's, you know. I think I must admit with all the social media uh, places, I've really cooled off and just got fed up with them at all. Mm -hmm. Like I used to use Twitter. It took me ages to adopt it. Then I got into it and I thought, I'll really try this. And then, and then a lot of people did. They got it and then they all got fed up with it and stop doing it and, and now it's funny when i've given up on it and don't do anything on it more people want to follow me now i'm not doing anything than when i try to you know when you say hey and get something catchy to help mm. to get some followers don't give don't give two hoots now and there's more people clicking on follow i thought why on earth do they want to follow me it must be what the, a bot that's just picked me out and said well let's follow him or something it can't be somebody looking and saying oh i like what he's tweeting because i very rarely tweet anything so i looked at facebook and thought oh I'll, you know like that the the content on there the only thing i'm on facebook for because it's a good way just to keep just to keep in touch to say hello right. and people that you never get to talk to or that are overseas relatives and that you you know not that close with but you would love to just keep in touch with and that's a good way to do it but then even then that when that started to introduce more video and now the people post links to videos i thought you know, i don't like that on facebook you know when they post a, a video of a youtube or something funny in that i thought well no it's fine if you do something that you did funny mm -hmm. but not just posting something that's on youtube i think that's you know there's, there's too many things that you can look at for yourself and i don't scroll down most of the feed you look on facebook there's always video after video after video and so it's changing quite a bit to to what it used to be. So I'm getting quite fed up with that as well, mm -hmm. to be quite honest. But it's and as you said, when more people hack them and that. But then again, there's a lot of people out there that just sign up for the Facebook accounts and don't look at the settings on their account mm -hmm. and they're just leaving themselves wide open and say, you know, come and play with my account because they don't realize that everything they do goes to everybody or everybody can access everything. It's just, they just don't even look at the basic settings on their system. Well, that's, that's what happened here. The way they got access to us unhackable people, I'm assuming, <laughs> of course, now I'm probably making myself a target. The way, the, the, <laughs> the way they got access to us was through this person was a member of this group and they streamed mm. it over the group. Like it was being streamed from the group was the way they did it. So all these people who they didn't hack were stuck because they were receiving all notifications from that group feed. So mm. they can stream their, their video and it showed up on my phone and it showed up on everybody's, you know, everybody who was awake at the time. And again, Eastern time, it was two in the morning. So, you know, um, uh, you know, I, I was, I was getting ready to leave work. And, uh, and all of a sudden I'm like, what in the world? You scroll on down and say, nope, that's not your average video. And you know, it's, it's like, it's hunting you down now. I mean, you know, it's, it's yeah. going to be a place. It's just not going to be safe for anybody that doesn't want that type of content to be on. It's just going to take over. But uh, now I have automatic, uh, things every time, the the, the audio podcast publishes on Mondays, there's a tweet sent, there's a, a Facebook uh, you know, posting to where you can click and listen to it. Um, 
you know, there's uh, a, um, sometimes I'll publish it straight from my website to Google plus or something. There's also a blogger account that I have. That was, that was my original website. It publishes to that. It publishes the Tumblr, um, you know, like a post an automatic posting to Tumblr. And I remember one day all of a sudden I got this thing popped up and said, Hey, congratulations. You've done a hundred postings. And I'm like, well, I haven't been over there in like three months. <laughs> <laughs> and it was, it was because it automatically once a week publishes the podcast and the show notes oh. to Tumblr. So, you know, all that stuff's going on. And so, you know, that's, that's good. And, and so I guess I do have a presence even whenever I'm not there, <laughs> but it's, it's uh, the, the Facebook has been good for us because we've had a group private message that has been rolling in my family that had to do with the care of my father and, uh, you know, and of course of my mother as well now, um, since my father is gone, but I mean, but you know, we've just keep a rolling thing going on and we just constantly update that. And so, um, yeah, it's, it is come in handy for that. And, you know, you can switch, you can trade pictures, show pictures to people and things like that. But as far as like living on there and these constant things where they're trying to get, people are trying to get, you know, such and such and such and such share. If you agree, well, I might agree, yeah. but I'm not going to be sharing these things. I'm not going to do the chain letter things. I'm, you yeah, know. And that's what a lot of people I see that, you know, Oh yes, yeah, share with this, this with as many people as you can. And it's sort of, no, I'll just, don't do that and they try to shame you into doing a lot of those things but mm -hmm. like you said group things can be quite good but i i still don't quite understand all the <clears throat> the group things but i just assume whatever i do on there it's going to every man in the world's going to see it anyway so oh, totally, and yeah. assume it's just going to go to a single group anyway so yeah you but, can you, you can publish it to the group or you can publish it to the world or just uh, individuals or however you want to do it. You just kind of have to pay, pay attention to what you're doing, but it's on somebody else's server and you never know where it's going to actually go. They won't even show things. I mean, they are very restrictive. They have stuff that's being promoted and that they will mm. show to everybody. And then your friends may not, like I've posted things from, uh, you know, I posted something whenever my father uh, uh, passed away, there was a little tribute I did with, that poem, you know, that his favorite yep. poem, one of his favorite poems. And so I posted something about that and sent everybody to the link. Well, my friends very slowly noticed that link over the next week because it would oh. finally hit their account three days yeah, later, yeah. five days later. And I could see the actual map of how, you know, almost a map of how people, oh, I just saw that. This is so great. Mm -hmm. And, 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 but it took a week for it to filter out through all of my direct friend contacts. It was kind of weird. They've rationed it out, you know. It's just strange how uh, they decide, they know better what you need to see. Mm -hmm. And which <laughs> ads you need to see. And, and, and because, but people sometimes, oh, that's a bit annoying. But so, well, if they just showed you everything in the order that you did it, you probably wouldn't get to see anything either. Well, that sounds if like Twitter. <laughs> There's so much stuff there that if they didn't do something, you could never keep up with it. Like it's, there's so many, even if you follow 20 people or 10 people, it's just so hard to keep up with all, all the traffic. And the only way, and I, I, I'm thankful when I'm all the way over here in, in Australia, because you can just do a bit, go away. Mm. Because nobody replies or does anything. Because when I'm doing it, like here, it's probably at 3 a.m. in the west coast of America, and like yours, it's still early morning. There's not many people around. Mm -hmm. So by the time I get off, go to work, anybody will be replying when I'm at work, and then when I get home, and they're in bed. But I've noticed when I go over to America and you're over there, and you get on your com, you don't get off for three hours because you do something, somebody replies, and then you somebody, and then mm -hmm. you. Because they're all there and, and online, and you just keep going and going. Where it's just sometimes quite thankful that uh, I can't do it. But I always set now just a little, I just check things in the morning, but five, ten minutes. But I don't do a great deal. But then I won't look at it all the day. I know I've got the, uh, I can get it on the phone and check that. But now there's, what's it? There's just normal Facebook. Then there's Messenger in there, isn't there as well? Yeah, the Messenger was what we were using to keep our family. Uh... Yeah you know, a uh, uh, conversation okay. going. And then there's the, then there's WhatsApp, the Microsoft one as well. So then that's on there. Then you've got chat on that and photo thing. I'm just getting so lost. But WhatsApp, I talked to my cousin who's in Hong Kong. I talked to her the other day for 
about an hour on the phone, but that's great for that because it's hooked up to your phone. So it's really good for that. And I had that with mum listening and I hooked it up to a, a Sony Bluetooth speaker, which has the microphone in it too. So it's really loud and it was really good, much better than you get from a, a normal not much better it's about the same as a, a normal phone but i wasn't paying the phone charges on it it was just the the little cost of the the internet provider anyway cool. that sounds mm. good yeah i like that yeah like i say it's a it's all it's all kind of an overwhelming thing now but it just what gets me is back in the 80s whenever i was into computing and i was um, programming stuff like that i knew every file on my computer because i put it there that's right. Yes. Okay. Now everything's just being done to you. I mean, it's just, yeah. I don't know. That, that's right. <laughs> uh, yeah. And I mean, it's just kind of like, what in the world? Where in the world did this come from? What? Well, and they're popping up and telling you that you need to buy this or you need to buy that. And, you know, uh, the ads are extremely targeted. I mean, based on an actual product you looked at that maybe you didn't buy, or even if you did buy it, they still try to show it to you again because you looked at it recently. Mm. And, uh, you know, so, uh, what, I, what, what I think is funny about Facebook is that almost half of what you see is like a targeted ad mm -hmm. and it comes up, you know, they have ads over here, but then all of a sudden they're coming up in your stream as well. So what, what gets paid for is what they're trying to show. And, you know, these people are supposed to be getting some kind of a return on their investment whenever they push these things. And you get showed stuff sometimes that's not even relevant to anything you or you're ever thinking because somebody paid enough to have it shown to everybody. And, and yet it might be a week before it's possible with the things about my dad that somebody could have missed if we'd had a funeral in a normal normal amount of time, three, four, five days or something, three, four, that somebody could have missed that posting mm. until after the funeral because of That's how right. long it just long. trickled out and trickled out and trickled out and they'd finally show it to somebody, you know, and then, you know, they're thrashing it out to everybody. So that, you know, if we'd announced the funeral or something on they could have easily just missed it. Oh, I didn't know. I didn't get that until this next week. You know, so it's, and yet everything that got paid, things that are totally irrelevant to anything I'm thinking or doing, I get an ad for that instead of them showing the personal stuff. So it's, it's not about our personal wants or needs or communications anymore. It's about the ads they show us. And then in between, they're going to let us talk to each other a little bit. Mm. And the things I just, like I said, I don't mind being marketing people doing ads for something I might be interested in looking at. But what I really do hate is being targeted by people after you've done something that they know all the information and they still go after you, like like Adobe where the, they've got Creative Cloud memberships. And one of the big things with the Creative Cloud is, is you sign up, you've got your Adobe sign on, you get your software and you register it through your, through your subscription. Mm -hmm. And the whole point is if you go on another machine, or else when there's a new version, you'll download the next version. And same with Captivate, you've got a, a membership, and then you talk to that. But each time you download a new version of it, then you get their telemarketers say, when will you be interested in buying it? I'm already buying it. <laughs> so I'm already a subscription. But that's what they get the message from me taking it from the subscription and downloading it. And, and I always say to them, well, I can only get that with a, a membership. You know, you've got that there. You know, I've got a paid membership because you've got all my details. And if you don't, well, that's just quite silly wasting your time trying to, well, when, how soon do you think you'll be buying the product? Well, no, I've already got it. <laughs> that's well, what I, I, I really feel sorry for the telemarketer people because they're sitting there and there's a computer screen in front of them mm. and the call is made in an automated fashion and then all of a sudden this pops up on the screen and they're on the line mm. uh, uh, you know, you're looking at your you're looking at your screen trying to hurry up and get the information about them um i remember whenever before i started working at the post office this has been over 30 years ago, they, uh, I used to work at a, uh, finance company that, you know, and I was doing some collections and stuff like that. And at that point, everything was, was on cards, you know, these big cards, mm -hmm. you know, it's okay. And so 
every time you would contact or talk to somebody, you would write notes on the back of the card about what you'd done and what you'd talked about and what was going on. So what you would do if you were making collection calls, you would have a stack of cards here you had to call, and you would just pick it up, and you would look at the front, you'd look at the back, and then, you know, you would see what was happening. Uh, okay, and, and this would take 30 seconds to 45 seconds, and you would pick up the phone and call. Well, that, the call was connected, and then it appears on their screen, and they've got to kind of hold mm the conversation for a second until they get pertinent okay. details. And then sometimes they don't. Um, I had somebody call back. And again, this was 20 some years ago. It was my, my mother-in-law was, she had cancer and she was terminal and uh, they couldn't really deal with collection calls and things where she had, uh, you know, not wasn't working anymore and stuff like that. And so I was, you know, I told her, I said, well, yeah, you know, I used to be a collector. And so I'm, I can, I can deal with this. I'll, I'll help you and, and deal with this. So we gave my our number and they would call. Well, one day somebody called up and said, hello, we're with uh, this particular credit card and this and this and this, and, you know, and she owes this much money. And then the month before she'd actually paid them a pretty large amount of money. And I said, um, okay, is there any extra insurances on this account? And so she said, uh, well, I don't know. And I said, it should say right there in front of you mm, you what's on the life. account. And she said, wait a minute, let me see. Uh, and I said, and she said, I don't see anything about insurance. I said, does it say anything about any credit protection or, you know, uh, disability protection or anything like that. And she said, there's something here that says credit, uh, protection plus. Oh. I said, let me talk to your boss. Mm. <laughs> and then they weren't really sure because they were more of a floor supervisor. So I went to their boss and this boss, I said, look, my mother-in-law is terminal. And I said, you've been harassing her for this for months. I said, Credit Protection Plus sounds like life and disability. I said, she has been disabled. She's terminal. And you guys have been harassing her. She paid you a couple hundred bucks and something a month last month. And I said, and these people have been calling and harassing her. And the person who called didn't even know. I said, I used to be a collector. And the first thing we would do if somebody quit paying was, oh, Oh, good. They have disability insurance, mm. you know, and so it would pay their payments while they were disabled. That's the first thing you check if you're a collector, yeah. you know, that way you don't have to worry about is, it. It's fine. Is there anything, is there any, is there any other way that's there to protect the, uh, the debt and the, go for that? Cause you know, well, if they're not paying it, well, that, cause there's a reason for that. Oh, they've got this extra insurance must be because of that. And as you said, if you've got another way of getting it. But... Yeah. I mean, that, that's the thing. What happens is not only do you, you know, they have that, that disability. A lot of people will get it and won't even think about it. So they, mm. uh, they have a tree fall on their car, which disables them for a little bit. Okay. Well, th sure. They're having financial troubles, but if all you have to do then on your end is basically file the claim and then you, the payments are coming in while they're disabled, you don't have to harass the customer. You don't have that no. on your delinquency reports. And so everything's so who, what creditor would not want that? I mean, mm -hmm. and, and, and they're harassing her, not knowing when right in front of them is the information they need to know that this could be paid. She didn't remember hey. having it on the account. I just got a hold of it and ask about it and had to go three levels high in order to find out about it, you know, whether if they really had it or not. They just told me, they said, don't make any more payments. Don't do anything else. And they said, we'll just send you the papers and, uh, you know, and then you just file the claim, you know, whenever she, she's passed away and it'll be paid in full and you won't ever have to worry about this again. And I said, train your people. Mm. I said, cause they've been harassing her for months. But it's amazing how you think how many people pay things that they don't have to because they've got insurance mm -hmm. and they just don't realize it's i always worry about a lot of these things i think if there's nobody in a family left how does 
that money get paid out because unless there's a family member chasing it and if you because it's still your rightful thing and if you've left it to somebody or something mm -hmm. that may not be a family member that wouldn't even think about going looking for things how do you it, how do they know because it sometimes goes, it goes to the state and the state actually mm -hmm. is supposed to settle the estate if there's mm. no family members, there's no will, and then there's nobody with a claim who wants to claim on it, um, you know, then the state has to be I, settled. I you can't just leave the stuff laying out there. If there's a will, though, but how does somebody, if they, you cack it by yourself, how does somebody know to go and look for the will? If they don't look for it or ask for it, nobody would know either, would they? Because if nobody comes out in the woodwork and says, oh, here's something, there's not an alarm that goes off when you, you, you kick the bucket and say, this is all, all the insurances that's got to be paid out. I'm sure all the insurance companies just keep very, very quiet. I just hope nobody notices. Then they don't have to pay it out. <laughs> oh, exactly. Exactly. But there, but life insurance doesn't fall under the normal plan of the estate around here. It's set up. It's separate from the estate. You just have a beneficiary and whoever you've got listed as a beneficiary gets the cash. Hmm. And so that's, the, that's, that's not the, part of the estate. If you if you die, how do they know that you've died to pay it out? Does it automatically happen or not? If nobody asks about it, so yeah. Well, there 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 has to be a claim made, and so whoever would make that claim, or you know, mm. I'm assuming uh, generally it's it's a little bit hard for somebody to die and somebody not notice, you know, mm. and 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 uh, people who don't have family members uh, have a tendency to leave it to charitable institutions you know, or close friends or something like that. So there's usually somebody, you know, unless they were just such a miser, they didn't find them for a week. And then there was, you know, it was just like a recluse or something, you know. But that's what I think. I'll just enjoy what I've got and anyway. So if I, if I don't, I'm, I won't have anything to worry about leaving. So, mm. Well, there you go. Like you say, it was a, there was a bumper sticker I saw on the back of somebody's car. It says, leave us alone. We're spending our children's inheritance. And that's what I, <laughs> Yeah, but as, as as far as that goes, you know, it's not the kids until the parents are done with it, you know, and then and if they spend it all, well, that was their money to spend. That's what they've been saved for. It's it's uh, you know, it's there. I hate it when people expect to get the an inheritance. And mm -hmm. well, if it's there, that's fine. But you know, it's not there to to protect you. You should go on your own way, and it's for them to enjoy their their, their senior years. And you would expect most of it to be gone, but. Uh, I know, like my parents, and they would never seen anything from their parents or their parents. There was, there was the only thing they got left probably would be debt. From <laughs> right? Them. Yeah, uh, yeah. Like you say, there's there that happens a lot. I think there, there's a lot of people who I think maybe people might be getting a little smarter now, but but mm -hmm. years ago, back in the '50s, '60s, whatever, people would not really do any planning at all and i know a lot of farmers would plan mainly to leave land to mm. their kids never occur to them you know that all of a sudden you have this kid living in an apartment in new york city and you leave them 40 acres of land and then yeah. all of a sudden they're like okay what am i gonna do with that because you know i've got a job here in the city and then all of a sudden they start getting hit with the taxes <laughs> the mm. real estate taxes on this land so what you've done is handed them they don't um, value the land and you've handed them a liability yeah. is what you've done. So no, but again, you know, land, land's great. You know, I think, I think land will be, land's nice. I've got seven acres of it myself. That's kind of cool. But, uh, but, uh, you know, but at the same time, it's, um, you know, it, it, you have to be sensitive to what your heirs, I think would want, mm. you know, and whether or not you're, you're going to put a burden on them. Uh, there was a guy recently, there is a cemetery here and the guy, whenever he started the cemetery advertised it as perpetual care. Mm. And he got out there and mowed it every day and did this, and did that and everything. And, uh, and all of a sudden he passed away and tried to leave it to family members. But what he did was left this huge liability for perpetual care on his cemetery. Yeah. So somebody had to do it. <laughs> right. I mean, I mean, and, and so, so there started, the things start showing up in the paper about how the cemetery was like waist high, you know, and, and I mean, this is right visible from main road there, you know? Um, and so it was a, um, 
I mean, it was just really a big problem. They eventually were able to sell it. I don't know how, because somebody would have to do the care on the cemetery with not, without getting any of the benefit of the original plot fees, you know, yeah. that were paid yeah. for the plots. And, and then all they had, they, if somebody took it over, they basically are getting the liability without getting any of the cash, the initial cash for it. I mean, it was really short sighted on that guy's part to promise perpetual care, but now, mm. now, now somebody got it and it's being uh, worked on. And, uh, and what, you know. people do, what people do now is they'll provide lifetime care, mm -hmm. which that just means his. <laughs> so, yeah. Like, like when people say lifetime warranty. So yeah, well, it's the lifetime of the product and the lifetime is expected to be five years. So that's what it is. Well, it's, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's funny to have a lifetime warranty based on something people are dying to get into. Yeah, well, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say the only thing you can guarantee on is what's it? Death and taxes, isn't it? So, oh, so exactly, exactly. Uh, so. That 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 video. I mean, you you go ahead, but there's that um, um, cemetery had a real funny sign mm -hmm. out front, and if I can find it in my pictures here, I'm going to show it to you. They had a pet <laughs> a pet cemetery as well, but this thing is hilarious. Uh, see if I can uh, if I can find it and which uh, thing it's in. I'll I'll share it on the uh, screen. You go ahead. One of the only, well, the only movies I ever saw Fred Gwynn in was a Pet Cemetery, wasn't it? That mm -hmm. was Herman Munster, but he, that was the only one I've seen him in a film outside. That was a Stephen King film called the. I'm pretty sure yes. it was him in. That, yes. wasn't it? So, yes, yes, it was him. <laughs> now, uh, did you ever um, did you ever do um, okay before? him he was in the Munsters. Mm -hmm. him and grandpa yes, in black Cass and white played cops in car 52 wasn't it where Cass, are you car, six, uh, car 54 where 54, are you 54 yes 54, 54, 54. car 54 yeah. where are you mm -hmm. yeah because i'm yeah, sure that's that. what they, they played was the cop that was the first one before the Munsters and that so mm -hmm. and it was, was him in... him and grandpa were were in the yeah. uh yeah they were Our in the thing Al Lewis, I think that's his name, isn't it? Fred Gwynn and Ab Al Lewis. So. Yeah, I think so. That was uh, that, that was good. I, I really uh, I watched some of that, and that was really really super funny. <laughs> okay. I like a, I like a lot of those old ones, like the the McHale's Navy. They're all stupid, but the really because of the clean fun. There's mm. not nothing really aggressive in them, even though that they're, they're supposed to be Navy people, but they're just such fools and. Uh, that's what the, we're missing. There's, there's just so easy, and the, it nothing sort of dates too much in them because they're just making normal fun. Like a lot of the current ones, if you watch them in six months' time, you don't like them as much because what they're talking about's gone out of favour. But the old ones that just seem to have the the same sort of comedy works these days. Mm -hmm. Have you found it yet? No. Yes, I, it? I, I actually I did. Let me see. I'm uh, I'm double clicking mm -hmm. on to see if I can get it. How big I can get it on the screen. See uh, if I can says there, there. says not 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 responding. Let's see if it comes up here. One full screen, so I can have a look at it. When okay. It comes up. Waiting, waiting, waiting for it to come up here. For some reason, it didn't come up. Try it again. I can see it through there your it is, There it is. There it is. There it is. Okay. <laughs> okay. So in order to share this, I need to hit the plus plus button. Yeah, and share whichever screen it is. I suppose. Okay. Let's see. Hopefully, it'll work. That was the wrong thing there. Let's see. Share system sounds. Share screens. Okay, then I'll see which screen. Here we go. Oh, it's going. Whoops, that's right. Look what this says. <laughs> Cemetery where pets can romp and play in their metal boxes. <laughs> down <laughs> <eight of eternity. laughs> metal okay, box. you know the metal boxes? Yeah, that's what, so what did I mean, what are you talking about metal boxes? I mean, okay, and this has been there for decades. I, I've lived here almost 25 years myself. It's 23 years, and I, it was old whenever we moved in. That has been there. <laughs> but the who, you know, what's with the metal boxes? Yeah, that really makes it sound really nice. And, and, yeah, they and roll up and play in their metal boxes. Boxes. Yeah. Down through the ages of eternity. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, it just seemed kind of confounding to I me. Mean, okay, if you're going to romp and play, well, you could right. do this in you an don't... open field. You don't want to do this in little metal boxes. 
No, definitely not. So. <laughs> But this, but that, that 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 actual that, that actual cemetery i mean it's it's still there i went by the other day and the sign is still there even with the new owners and uh i'm just I was, uh, <laughs> and we should find the owners and say what what is it with that sign does it mean anything am i missing am i missing the <laughs> the meaning behind that so it's uh well it was just funny like we said after our conversation well last week with d about all the animals and that mm-hmm. so it, it's the sort of thing where now I used to have bury them in the backyard and do that. But then what, after a few years, you get a bit too many animals to do that. And yeah. like dad buried one of the dogs many years ago, but mm-hmm. silly thing, what he did, he buried him, wrapped him up in plastic. So he's still probably there. All you know, I had to dig up the, the garden in that one and found him all mummified. It was sort of like him. Oh, uh... It's sort of like, <laughs> this crit and I thought if you just put him in a sack it would have decompose and the only one that's that's recently gone into the garden that I had room for was the cockatoo last September when oh, he okay. died uh, yeah he went were. but but usually the dogs if because when they get to the end of their life they get put down because they're too sick but I I get them disposed of properly because I just there's no sure. point bringing them home it's and like these days if somebody moves into your house the last thing they want to be doing is digging up all your animals like you won't be so bad because you've got seven acres you could have a proper pet cemetery area that you could <laughs> well there's actually own. there's actually a cliff face down on the very lower part of my property where everything's so mountainous around here and what we would do would be to to wedge them into shelving on that cliff and then get get one of those dog tag type of things printed up at walmart and then just put it there where each pet was at I thought he was going to say he was going to just chuck them over the cliff. <laughs> oh no 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 no! We 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 go down to, down below the cliff and then and then do do that. Uh, one of the things Grizzly was known for was his fangs. He had these. Of course, he's a black cat and he's got these huge That's fangs, cool. and I mean yeah. they're hanging down real low. And and uh, he would look so totally benign, but look like a vampire all at the same time. <laughs> I mean, and so this is a picture where he was laying on his back on the floor up against the sliding glass door. And I titled the picture, I can't find my ear because oh. one ear sticking up and the other one is against the glass down like this. And he's just looking so nice and benign. He's got two fangs sticking down and he just looks like, Hey, what's up? You know, just so benign and so nice. And his ear is completely missing. And uh, you, you can't really see. It just looks like it's just gone. And uh, I had somebody on Flickr go, really, where is his ear? <laughs> Oh. <laughs> he's up against a sliding oh, glass door and you can't see his ear yeah, no we cut it off we cut it off it's not not really there at all it's, yeah yeah yeah. we just cut, 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 cut his ears off <laughs> i suppose as well like we said with animals it's a bit hard when a horse goes it would be yeah. a pretty big hole wouldn't it so... <laughs> well that would be that would be a little a little a little tougher to deal with now 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 a grizzly was one that um we had always done that but then she approached me whenever we knew grizzly was uh, it turns out he actually had spleen cancer was what he actually uh, was suffering from and so we started coming close to it and she kind of checked into actually having him cremated and there's a local place here the local uh, you know mortuary that will do animal cre- cremations and so she talked to me about it and we checked into it and it was 120 dollars maybe total with what? the but that's not too bad is it oh no 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 i mean you know i mean if they just said two thousand yeah I mean, okay no, no i don't think so but uh, but i mean you know there and that included the cost of the veterinarian uh mm. you know having to put him to sleep and we were right there and got to be you know um, with him as he, we were patting him and everything as he went to sleep, you know, and then they do the first shot to put them to sleep, actually make them sleep. And then they do the life ending shot after they shuttle you out of the room. But we were, you know, we were patting him and, and everything like that. And he went to sleep with us, you know, patting him and stuff. And then we went out to the car and then, um, she was not able really to mess with him at all. And so they wrapped him up for me and I took him and then we took him actually to the mortuary. So, um, it was about $120 between the actual fee for the 
you know, euthanasia and then for the actual cremation and a box, you know, to put him in with a picture and all that. And so that was, that was actually quite affordable for such a family member that he was, you know, and I had never considered anything like that before, but it was, it was, it was a good thing. And, and it actually worked out really well. And I'm, I'm glad we did that. Um, Dee Dee says that she wants him actually buried with her in her casket. <laughs> So, you know, I mean, just in a little box, you know, in his little metal, no, it's not a metal box, it's a wooden box, but to uh, have him in there. And there's not, there's not much left, um, just a little handful of ash, basically. And, uh, you know. Like you said, it's not so much, you know, what you do with him in the end, it's more so for your own feelings, yes. isn't it? Because yeah. as I said, it doesn't make any difference, but it just gives you a bit of comfort. And that's what people don't understand sometimes. Mm -hmm. It's got nothing to do, it doesn't matter about that, that it's, it's not about the the the, not the cat or the, that's died or the animal or the person. It's it's for you. That's why we do all that. It's not for them. Oh, People exactly. Sort of they're not they're not worried about give, it. Uh, but give them a lovely send off. Well, no, it's not. It's a it's a send off for you. Hmm. It's for the people to celebrate their lives and 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 to think about them. So they've 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 put up with all the world's trouble. They're free. <laughs> they're, oh, right. Yeah. It's it's. it's uh, it's where it's really strange sometimes. Though. Well, he was he was such a companion to her. I mean, where she's been disabled and she's been home, uh, you know, most of the time that that he was such a companion to her, and mm. so um, she was closer to him than any other animal she'd ever had. And so it was, you know, it was it, it to me. I I could totally see. And again, it's something I never considered. We live down in the country, and you bury them, or you know, just whatever, have your little pet cemetery, but um this this was really worth it i mean you know look at the you know the the money that we put into it really it was that much and and but you know he's sitting at basically on a table at the head of our bed and there's a little picture of him and a little plaque that has a name on it and he's you know the little ashes are just kind of sitting there right now so you know and that's and the, fine but it it means is, yeah. it means so much to her to you know know and another thing too there was this thing what if whenever we get older if we, I mean, he was a big part of her life and he won't stop being, I mean, mm. he was there. Uh, what if we, um, move, you know, for physical reasons, we have to move out of this house and get a house that's more on one level, things like that. And then he's buried in the ground out there somewhere, mm. you know, that's uh, it, that's it. this way he's transportable. <laughs> that's so right. Move I mean, him around. That's... The thing is with cats though, as well, which makes it even worse is because cats tend to stay around about twice as long as dogs if the if you look after them don't they they can go 16 17 18 mm -hmm. years so they could be around usually twice as much as dogs so you're missing it even more like i know i'm going to miss william terribly but as i said they they when they're 10 to 14 if like the last one was 14 i was really lucky to get 14 years out of that like william's even 11 mm -hmm. now but as i said you just go so down quick but when you've got them like I know a friend of mine had the littler dogs, which seem to last 16, 17. It's a real jaunt when they go because of being around so long, whereas 10 years sometimes is not too too long a time, but when they're just twice as that that much. So how old was your cat? Uh, he... Grizz uh, Grizzly was uh, like about, f I think she said about 14. We got yeah. him when he was just, just, a little, uh, just a little kitten. Now we had another cat that, it was a used kitty <laughs> and uh we actually <laughs> got yeah <laughs> we actually got got him from um from just some people who were uh moving and had to divest themselves of their cats and this was an older cat and he was kind of funny looking because um uh, he his ears were just just stayed flat like this all the time and so oh, yeah. and the reason why they said he'd had ear mites real bad sometime in the past they'd done some surgery and it relaxed the muscles that or whatever that held his ears up and so he just had flat ears so he looks like he was mad all the time you know you know how they put their ears right. okay and then he was missing one of his teeth to the point it made him do this all the time <laughs> okay so, <look> really angry. <laughs> so there was a there was a kid that was visiting over to the house here for a second because i you know i was teaching him in sunday school class and all of a sudden he he come out on the porch and the cat the most lovable cat ever but it looked like it wanted to eat you every time you saw it if you didn't know it and so he backed up and looked at it and i said no he's not gonna do anything to you his ears are just kind of stuck that way and he goes look an elvis cat 
Oh, oh yeah. that's right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so anyway, he was Elvis from there on out because the other people just called him Kitty, you know, and so he was Elvis. <laughs> It's amazing how you do find some cats like that that have got floppy ears and that, but that makes them look really mean and evil, mm. doesn't it? Whereas, oh, it, so they're really quite nice cats, but they just look, you know, like those ones. That, what's there's a breed of cats that don't have ears that they're just sort of oh, like it's open, yeah, just, just little nubbins have, sticking up there. Yeah, so. little that look real, they don't have ears and they look really strange, don't they? When you uh -huh. when you're used to little ears and that. So I saw a a YouTube video just the other day this was actually one of the ones that i hate on facebook when you, you know you go on facebook and you see these videos right. it was somebody in russia driving their car with the kitty sticking out of the window but it was a lion oh <laughs> it was a lion cub <laughs> you know you <laughs> know had it out and then, then they stopped it and everybody was patting it and he was trying to get his mother come come see the pussycat and oh and she's the you know, old russian woman go oh got to try to touch the kitty and i thought oh they said only in russia <laughs> so, well i I've, I've always thought it would be the best thing ever living in the country the way we do uh having like a panther or something really big <laughs> like that and then putting out a sign i just want to put out a sign that says beware of cat that's right you know and then some of the neighborhood dogs start disappearing and people just wonder what's happening it's a, it's a big old cat out there hunting you know <laughs> but as i said you'd have one of them but you'd come up somebody come around and say oh my god jeffrey's been eaten mm -hmm. <laughs> oh totally no totally about. yeah well you know i mean something, something that big would be taking down cattle and stuff like that when you start hurting people's commercial things then at that point they, they want to do something about it <laughs> <laughs> that, that's right. Just so, imagine yeah. what kind you of a litter let, box would you need for such a big old kitty? <laughs> and then you look at the trouble just a normal household pussy cat can do when mm. they go on the rampage out at night. So you can imagine what these huge cats could do because the little ones cause all sorts of troubles, can't they? When they they go out like a tomcat on the prowl can cause so much damage. And that's uh, imagine if we had six or seven of these big lions and tigers going around doing that i suppose they have that sort of trouble in india with the tigers i suppose so. well yeah yeah did you, did you ever hear that song uh, uh in the jungle the mighty jungle yes. the lion okay that is a lullaby that's based oh, on it was a lullaby based on the idea that you're telling children that the lion is sleeping tonight and will not be coming to drag people out of their huts all right, okay. So, I mean, you know, the the lion sleeps tonight, so you don't have anything to worry about and go to sleep, you know, my child. Because, I mean, you know, there's even been modern stories here just in the last few years to where all of a sudden you hear, now that we've got so much news around, of lions. Uh, and usually it's an older lion that, you know, can't really hunt prey very well. They get to the point to where they think, okay, look, hey, look, there's prey just lying on the ground, and they will go and sneak into villages, drag people out of their huts, and take them off and eat them. And, you know, and it's not much people can do about it, you know, in those, no. those environments. Um, you know, if you don't have some kind of big elephant gun, there's not much you can do. And everybody's asleep, and they don't know anyway. And they just grab somebody, and they hear them yelling, but, I mean, they just drag them right off, and there's nothing, anybody right there, you know, they can beat on it, and they do that, but it, it doesn't help any like it's, it's just something happens, huge coming and dragging people happens away like happens like that in florida and i think uh, darwin for us where the alligators or crocodiles do that don't they they sort of come out in the middle of the night and sometimes get people with the when they're not being too careful so i think they're very dangerous those ones so i saw i saw a video yesterday of a cat it was like looked like a little caiman or something coming up and the cat just is looking at it, and of course it's spitting and everything, and finally that cat just starts going whack, 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 just right, you know, it's real fast, right on this <laughs> thing's nose, and it just backs up, and you know, it's like, <laughs> you just run it right back into the water, man. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so yeah, they might be small, but the you know the they don't care, do they? They certainly mm. make up for their size in their tenacity, mm -hmm. and that. But as I said, they're, they're totally different to dogs, but I, I still like them. I, I I don't don't know how people can't like like cats because they're so cuddly and that. But I, I can understand maybe why they won't want one, but the. They're just they're always a nice sort of creature, I think. So. Yeah, like you say, the 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 cat is something 
more that uh, you negotiate a relationship with the way you do with other people. Whereas a dog worships you and wants to find out what you want and will do whatever you want. I mean, because, you know, you are the alpha. Well, that's so they worship you, whatever you do. Uh, A dog is more like a child that never gets out of the toddler stage. Whereas a cat, you can, as long as you leave, you know, litter box and leave plenty of food and water, you can go away for a week. Yeah, and like the you know, and said, then then come back and everything's fine. He said, "You want to cuddle? You've got to earn it. I'm yeah. not coming to you until you've shown me you deserve to be cuddled to cuddle me." <laughs> Which yeah. like the dog, what? But they say, "No, I'm not coming until you do the right thing." But I think that's the whole attraction with them. You've got they are so interactive. Whereas I do love the dogs, but some of the, you know the they'll just like put, William's nice to there, sits there, doesn't need you. Whereas cats, usually, if I had a cat. I wouldn't be able to do this. It would be up on the thing, on the thing, wanting a pat, looking at the camera, yeah, look. playing with the microphone, <laughs> you know, flooring, the, like when you try to read a paper, they're always in front of it. They never mm. like you reading. <laughs> That's yeah, a, well, Diddy, Diddy has trouble with uh, Lily is, is the ultimate lab cat. I mean, this cat, as soon as I come in the house, met me at the door, uh, you know, and, and it's just following me around under my feet and everything like that. And as soon as I sit down right on my lap, okay. And we'll spend hours just sitting on your lap. Um, mm. just wants to be on you with you around you for skin exposed. She'll lay her face down on your arm, you know, on you, whatever. And, you know, she just wants, wants to be in you almost. <laughs> and so, but cats have different personalities to that. Some of them are aloof and they want to stay away only when they need something, they'll come to you and actually, you know try to get it well this cat here just just needs you know that that attention and that thing all the time yeah. and i find her easier to get along with when Dee Dee's home than whenever i'm here by myself because then she just wallers me constantly <laughs> you know and so uh whenever Dee Dee's here though you know she gets all that attention from from her and then you know then i'm i'm free to pet her have her on my lap at different times but it's not so insistent and on constant and you know i can't do anything with the, take a step without her under my feet or something you know and so uh because i uh, working and sleeping during the day i don't really have time to attend <laughs> her at her regular what she's usually do and so yes i do i will spend time with her on my lap i'll be playing skyrim i'll be watching tv now the door is closed right now and she's not in here because she would be on the desk and kind of coming between us here she didn't want to do it. Well, it looks like we've already gone through. We just started talking about one little thing, and it sort of went through for a whole down hour, didn't it? So yeah, it we, looks like it did. I think we were talking about the Facebook stuff first, then we got to animals. Yeah, on the animals. And, and uh, I'll just say we haven't had the tech down over for a couple of weeks because Rick's been in Chicago mm-hmm. with the, the Lectora Live conference, I think it is. So. Hopefully, I think we're back on this Friday, so with tech down over, so sounds good. I don't know what we're going to talk about, but that will be good because there's always always something new to to talk about, and I wonder what his setup went like for his uh, live recordings because I watched a few of them and it seemed to turn out really well. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Well, if anybody did, thank you for, for doing mm-hmm. so. And if you want more of this content, just subscribe there, and we'll you'll get a, a notification. If you tick on the bell, I think it is, it'll tell you every time we upload something new. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, then I check back every now and then because I change the title when Jeff sends me the, the link for the other one, and I keep <laughs> updating the titles every now and then. Anyway, <laughs> thanks for watching, and bye for now. See you later. Thank you so much for listening. Links for a free subscription, feedback, and everything else we do is at holbrooknewmedia.com. You can find all things Jeff Blanchard at jeffblanchard.com.